Hello, good morning. It's nice to see you. I have been conscious since about 6.30 this morning, which is great. That's actually when my alarm went off, although it took me a hot second to actually become conscious again because I think my alarm has been going off because my husband has been getting up early, working out first thing in the morning, which amazing for him. So thrilled for him. But then he goes into our bathroom and takes a shower. And the alarm clock that I use is this app called Sleep Cycle. And it actually wakes you up based on what it hears. And if it hears you start to stir before your alarm goes off, it'll actually wake you up early. I think my husband making noise in the bathroom is what's causing my alarm to go off on the earlier end of the range instead of the later range because the two days that he has done this, it has been a slog to get me to remain conscious. But I still have gotten up out of bed before seven o'clock, which means I'm reaching my goal. And that is actually what today's video is entirely about. Today, we are vlogging a day of reaching goals being productive, getting things done. And we are literally going to take a look at my Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets and we're going to achieve goals today. Anything that I can make a step towards today, we are going to do that thing. I am showing up as the ideal version of myself today and it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is a myth. Perfection does not exist. I want you to remember that. However, we're going to try to do our very best to embody this ideal version of myself that I have in my head that I know I can be, and it takes one step at a time to be able to create her reality, right? So here's what we're going to do. So I've been up since like 6.30, right? I've been conscious since 6.30. I have read a book, but not only have I read a book, I have finished the book, finished book one of three that's on my Cultivate What Matters Power Sheets. Book number two, I am listening to on audiobook, and I am about three quarters of the way through that book too. By the way, it's July 11th. So I am ahead of the game when it comes to my reading progress. And I am also about 50 pages into the fiction book that I want to be reading this month as well. So reading goal on point on top of the thing. Fitness goals, not so much. Let's be very clear. I have been getting my step at goals and I actually accidentally reached my stretch goal for step bets yesterday. And I plan on getting my stretch goal for my step bet again today. And the first order of business is going to be to go downstairs and get my workout done. I actually have a lot to show you downstairs because our home gym got an upgrade. My husband has been working really hard at making just little bitty changes that are making a huge difference. Are you leaving me? Are you leaving me? Thank you. Daddy just left with a suitcase, so she's not too thrilled with life right now. Don't worry, he'll be back by the time you see this video. He's only gonna be gone for two days. But <laughs> she watched him leave with a suitcase, and it's traumatic. My husband did look at her, held her head in his face, and went, I will be back in two days. Hopefully that message gets through to her little doggy brain and she decides not to freak out about it like she has the last several times that my husband has gone on a business trip. He will be back soon, I promise, Gracie. So like I was saying, we got an upgrade to our gym. I can't wait to show you that. And very excitingly, I haven't even had the chance to scratch the surface. But y'all know that my workout programs of choice and my husband's workout programs of choice all happen on the Beach Body On Demand app, now currently known as Body, B-O-D-I. This is not sponsored. Well, Beach Body On Demand members may know that they appear to be merging their like upgraded subscription and their regular subscription. So for those of us that have been paying like 180 dollars a year for access to all of the programs that they have released that are in like a special pre-release phase um we're all getting bumped to the higher price point of like 179 dollars a year but with that we are getting all of the upgraded stuff that goes with it the new body blocks the live classes it's kind of giving peloton vibes if you know what i'm saying and i'm really excited to dive in i know a lot of people are miffed that the price jump is so high my husband and i i, I informed him i was like so for our budgeting because our annual subscription Subscription renews in August. I was like, just FYI, instead of 110, it's gonna be 180 this year. And here's the here's the truth. Uh, we paid over $100 a month to go to the gym when we went to the Y. So the fact that it's $180 a year and he and I use it constantly 
and is our sole form of working out, um, worth every penny. So we are not mad about this upgrade at all. But the exciting part is our subscription wasn't set to auto renew and thus unlock all of the new features until mid August. And then I got an email yesterday from body saying, Hey, we're upgrading you now for free, um, 35 days early fantastic happy so while we were downstairs last night screwing around with my husband building the weight rack and me getting my step bed stretch goal I was kind of doing a quick like flip through the body stuff and I'm really excited to dive in and explore what that has to offer I'm thinking just like I used to do with the Peloton app they have some cycling workouts that I might be able to convert to elliptical workouts and do kind of the same thing and really just switch it up and keep me from getting bored basically and I'm really excited about that. So we're gonna work out today. But first, somebody actually asked me a question in my last video about a step bet and what you can do with a step bet and how to get started with a step bet. What is a step bet? Um, I do not have one coming. This it has no sell at the end or anything. I just wanna give you the information. A step bet is a challenge that you do in the step bet app. And basically what you do is you find a step bet. You can search for step bets. You can create your own. You can find one that one of your favorite creators is doing, right? And you join this step bet. And the reason it's called a bet is because you literally put money down on yourself. The typical buy-in I think is anywhere between 20 to $40. I have seen $40 be the most common for a six week step bet. What it will do is you have to have a device that syncs up to your phone that is accepted with the step bet app. Fitbit, Garmin, um, Apple Watch, etc. What the step bet does is once you, or even before you put the money down, what it will do is it will use its little magical steppy step algorithm to give you two goals based on your average steps as of late. I don't know the exact timeline, but here's what I do know. When I'm on point, when I'm getting 10, 11, 12,000 steps in a day on average, I do not do a step bet because the goals it will set for me will be astronomically difficult and I don't need to put that kind of pressure on myself nobody needs to put that kind of pressure on themselves especially in my era of self-love self-care it's not about burning the calories it's about joyful movement all of that jazz I don't need that kind of stress in my life however I was recently feeling that I wasn't getting enough steps I was averaging closer to seven to eight thousand steps which nothing wrong with that but I know that my body functions most optimally when I'm roughly at about 10,000 steps. So I was like, you know what? Let's join a step bet because it will help me improve my steps and my average is low enough now where the goals should in theory be a lot easier to achieve or not quite as big of a challenge. That's what we want, right? We don't want, we want challenges that push us out of our comfort zone, just beyond our boundaries, but not so far that they're completely unachievable and we're setting ourselves up to fail. And so that's why I chose this particular time frame to do a step bet because I knew that these goals would be completely attainable, but still a little bit of a stretch. So the little magical steppy step algorithm will give you two goals. Typical step bets run for six weeks. Each week you have four days a week where you are supposed to meet an active goal, two days a week where you meet a higher, more challenging stretch goal, and one day a week you get to rest or miss your goal. It, it, it gives you a buffer, right? I personally like to structure my weeks where if I can knock off Monday and Tuesday is my stretch goal day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is my regular goal day, and then Sunday is my rest day, great. Sometimes it doesn't always work out like that. Anyway, so from my little algorithmic steppy step thing, I got 10,410 steps as my daily active goal, the goal I have to achieve four days a week. I got 12,710 steps for my two day a week stretch goal. So all you do then, and people want to know how you get started, you move more. That like, that's it. You set things up, you put the money down, and then you go, you step and you make it your goal to achieve all of these goals. It will sync up with your app. If you miss it, you will get knocked out of the step bet. So that's, that's the whole thing. Step bets have one warm up week where it's like a, Hey, let's, let's, let's get the goals happening. Let's get you moving and give you a feel for what actually happens. And then weeks two through six are like the money's on the line. Let's say 100 people join your step bet at $40 a piece right? That's $4,000 in the pot. Let's say that throughout the six weeks, 50 people fail their mission, right? They miss their mark. As soon as you miss your mark, if you do not complete the week, 
then you are out of the step bet. You are removed, you lose your money, and that's it, you're done. And then for the rest of us, the other 50 who remain, not only will we get our money back if we win, but we will split the pot with step bet taking a portion, and I don't know exactly how it works, but we split the remainder of the money that the people who failed to do the step bet left behind. So if you put in your $40, you might get $42, $43 back, depending on how many people are in, how many people fail, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's just a fun little way to put money on the line to get you to move a little bit better. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's more of a, I'm going to lose the money challenge than I'm going to gain the money challenge. Don't do it for the potential for gain. You will only gain maybe at most three or $4, truly. I've never been in a step bet where I've gained more than a couple bucks, which is fine. The goal here is not to lose the $40 that you put down. So as long as you win, you get your money back. That's it, easy peasy. Doesn't matter how many people fail or how many people win. If you win, you get the money you put into the step bet back and you're done. And you've increased your activity over six weeks. Win, win situation. But there you go. There's your information on step bet. Now it's time to get that workout in. Okay, before I head downstairs, I wanted to show you an update. Um, I figured out how to make these little buff protein cakes a lot more palatable. It's delicious now, but it's gonna add some calories, which is fine. I'm not tracking calories anymore anyway. Um, but what this is, my friend, do you remember good old Weight Watchers 321 mug cake mix? I still love 321 mug cake mix. What is 321 mug cake? I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you. 321 mug cake is this amazing little concoction of two different cake mixes that you mix up. You take one angel food cake mix like you get in the baking aisle and then one other cake mix of your choosing. I have Betty Crocker rainbow chip that goes with the rainbow chip frosting and you mix them together. And then you have your little mixture, right? So just make sure everything's thoroughly mixed up. And then the three, two, one name comes in where you take three tablespoons of the mixture, two tablespoons of water, mix it all up and you pop it in the microwave for one minute. And then you have yourself a nice little personal mug cake that is a little bit lighter in points plus. Now I can tell you the points plus value. It's three points plus, Three points plus for the mug cake without adding anything in it. Could I tell you the calories and the macros? No, no, I cannot. I never bothered to figure it out and now it doesn't matter. But here's what I do know. Three, two, one mug cake, pretty delicious. So I added some three, two, one mug cake to my protein cake. And then the other thing that I did y'all was instead of doing what this calls for, which is one egg white and 122 grams or half a cup of unsweetened applesauce, I went, oh no, you know what would be better? Canned pumpkin. So instead of just the applesauce, I do most of it canned pumpkin. And then to get the liquid in there, I do a little bit of uh, applesauce and then like two tablespoons of water because I threw three tablespoons of the mug cake in there. And so the, the mixture is a bit more thick, but it tastes so much better. Um, so there's that. And I'm really excited about it. So I'm making your red velvet one. What's hilarious is right now this doesn't look red. It looks chocolate, which is right because red velvet cake is just chocolate cake. But still, we gonna put on our little sprinkle sprinkles. We're gonna pop this in the microwave and then I'm gonna let it cool so I can frost it and have it as a snack later. <laughs> and gym 2.0. Yes, you may remember, if you were with me previously, our gym used to be over here in this section, right 
here. But my husband decided that he didn't want to work out next to the exposed pink stuff, which who can blame him? So he decided that we're moving things and this is what we came up with. So here is a little tour for you. So of course we have my baby, my love, the elliptical machine. This is an Ascent Trainer by Matrix. It is quite pricey, but the way we actually kept the price down, which I've talked about before, is we got this real basic dashboard instead of like the big fancy one with the big screen, because pretty much for the price that you would pay to get like the enhanced dashboard, we bought ourselves a big screen TV and a stand and an Apple TV. So the structure of the basement gym is the same. We've got the elliptical in the corner, we've got the thing here, and we've got the really nice rubberized floor. We went to our Johnson Fitness and got the really expensive or like the nice brand. It's like $20 a tile um, rubberized floor. And it was originally like that big, but my husband recently upgraded us. So we have all of this. We expanded this way. We expanded this way and all the way back. So we have a lot more space now. Why, hello there. Can you not stand the thought of being upstairs by yourself? You know it's okay, right? You know it's okay, right? Anyway, I don't know. Now she will stay down here and she will pace back and forth because she can't just settle on a floor like this. Her Royal Highness's high knee cannot handle it. Um, so we have our nice big expanded, like twice the size now fancy floor. We are going to try and get another couple of these mirrors and like hang them so we have an actual mirror situation happening here. We've got our thingamabobber. And then we have our weight bench, which we got so I could do lift more. Have I successfully done lift more once yet? No, I've started, I mean, I've started it, but I haven't done the entire workout. And then the thing that my husband was building, just focus, will you? Last night was this weight rack. Is it overkill for what we have? Yes, yes it is. Especially since if you see down here, um, these little weights are actually too little to lay the proper way on here. And this one is barely making it. So, um, well, actually they're fine. These ones are fine. Um, so it's just the little ones there that are problem having, having problems reaching the way they're supposed to. So for now, until we come up with a better solution, I might get myself like a little weight tree to hold the, the one, two and four pounders. This is what we built last night. So we have a weight rack now, so we don't have to keep bending to the ground to pick up our heavy weights. Still have a fan, still have a pile of like bands and whatnot. Um, and yeah, that's, so that's our new gym. So now I'm going to play with the Beachbody app, the body, ooh, that was unnecessary. So now I'm gonna play with the body app. I'm gonna turn on TV here and see what kind of things there is to do and figure out what I wanna do as my workout today. very out of my comfort zone, by the way, and I don't even know if you can hear me very well, but in an effort to build my confidence and get out of my comfort zone, let's normalize normal bodies, normal bodies with the belly, working out, lifting weights, doing the things, and even wearing the tight clothes. Like, I'm well aware that this isn't necessarily the most flattering thing, and I don't care because A, Nobody really sees me unless, of course, I'm recording. And B, it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm strong. Did you see me lifting those 10 pound weights? One in each hand? Not bad for someone with a disability, huh? So let's, sorry, I'm huffing and puffing because those weights were heavy. Let's just take a second and normalize the normal body. Belly and all, what do you know? It actually looks like a cake now. Shout out to adding the three, two, one cake mix. If eating cake for lunch is wrong, then I don't want to be right. Lighting is terrible, but we're going to give it a try. See if this modification worked well for the red velvet cake. That's actually just a chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. <coughs> it's much better. Much better. Okay, so admittedly, the last couple of days, I have not been optimal 
at listening to my hunger and fullness cues. Hunger cues, yes, absolutely. Fullness cues, less so. And I actually have an app where I have to go in before I eat meals and I track how hungry I am when I'm starting and how full I am on the hunger and fullness scale. And it kind of gives me a, a, a rank of like, hey, you're doing a great job listening to your hunger and fullness cues based on what I choose. And my hunger cues, a plus score. My fullness cues, I, I tend to take it a little bit too far. And like even right now, I'm full. Instead of just satisfied, I'm full, which is fine. But I want to show you that I did, in fact, exhibit a little bit of self-control. And I left behind a little bit of the cake. Sure, would it be the worst thing in the world for me to take this, what, quarter of the cake? Fifth of the cake? And just finish it? Yes. I could do that and it wouldn't change my hunger levels probably too much or my satisfaction levels. I'd probably be teetering on the overstuffed. Um, but the reality is I'm trying very hard to listen to my hunger cues. That is one of the key principles or my fullness cues rather of intuitive eating. And I need to get better about it. And I need to exhibit a little bit more control, a little bit more restraint when it comes to actually doing that. So I am putting this little bit away. This was my lunch, by the way. Um, the total cake had 26 grams of protein, probably closer to 28 or so because I added pumpkin and whatnot um, grams of protein. So I had some protein up in here, which is great, but I'm putting it away for now, exhibiting the self control All right, let's go ahead and do a quick Sam's Club haul. I got not too much, but some really good things. Um, Zizol, because I'm allergic to everything right now and it's fine. I'm just living perpetually stuffed at night, but only at night. It's done. Um, coffee, because we always have at least one extra coffee on hand. We've got strawberries. We've got raspberries. We've got blueberries. Why? Because it's summer and they're all in season and it's beautiful. We got frozen organic blueberries. Why? Fab Four Smoothies. My husband makes them every weekend and I want to be making them more often. Um, so he just used the last of the blueberries yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and restock. I did get, we didn't need any like chicken, pork, whatever, cause we still have a lot left from our butcher box, but I did realize that I didn't have any ground beef. And I really like this ground beef because it is so lean. It is 93% lean ground beef, which is absolutely amazing. And the price is really, really good. It's 478 pound, can't knock it. So I picked up some of that. We've got some cuties because they're actually like big and look like they'll be juicy and delicious instead of like those little bitter golf balls. <laughs> I got some Southwest salad kits and I did this for a very specific reason. A, I've been really loving Southwest salads or just salad kits in general right now, but B, I have this homemade, all the way in the back here, um, that is homemade cowboy caviar made with black beans, canned roasted corn, and fresh pico de gallo. Only the pico de gallo is spicier than I thought it would be. So I figured if I got myself a Southwest salad kit, I could make the salad kit and throw in a few uh, spoonfuls of, and I'm thinking like bi the big honkin serving spoons, spoonfuls of that, mix it up, and it will kind of blunt the spice of the salsa, but still flavor wise, really mix in really well with the salad that I gave it. I bought these cans of albacore tuna because apparently albacore tuna has more protein and stuff in it. I did price check to see if I could get it cheaper at Target and the answer was no, I could not. 32 grams of protein per can, eight cans in the thing. I went to Sam's Club because I needed liquid egg whites and eggs and I got, the prices of eggs have gone way down, which is very, very exciting for me. Four and a half dozen, yes, that seems excessive, pasture-raised eggs for less than $14. On point. We got Kobe Jack cheese sticks. My husband needed some more of his bars, and so, and two of the bars that he eats are not available at Sam's Club anymore, at least not right now, but the Nature's Bakery bars are. And then this is the new thing that I saw on an Instagram account last time I went to Sam's Club and I couldn't find it, but now I did. And it is by the brand Counter. Never heard of them, but this is their taco mac and cheese. Don't know how it tastes. I don't know if it's too spicy. No freaking idea. Here's the description of it. Seasoned ground beef, elbow pasta, bell pepper medley, an onion and creamy queso sauce. Here's the rundown of the macros. Can we just? No, 
I'm currently not tracking, I'm intuitively eating, but it doesn't mean I'm not making really solid nutritional choices, y'all. And so things that are more macro balanced and macro friendly, um, I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. And so the reality is for 340 calories, there's three different servings in here, 340 calories, 10 grams of fat, 32 grams of carbs, three grams of fiber, wish it was closer to six, but that's fine, and 31 grams of protein. And then I looked at the ingredients. Check out these ingredients, y'all. Well, we got the beef, but also they have 2% cottage cheese in here. How freaking cool is that? So I'm really excited to give this a try. I'm not gonna lie, it looks tasty. I hope it's not too spicy. I'm very excited to try this. But that is my Sam's Club haul. All right, I just got back from going to get my brows did at Ulta, and I wanna let y'all know, if there's any of you that are in the market or you're a fan of liquid blushes, I've never tried a liquid blush, but I know they're very hot and trendy right now. I tried one on my hands today. Can you see? Can you see this? I have two on my hands right now. Um, they're by Juvia's Place, with the new Juvia's Place liquid blushes. The amount, the amount of blush I put on my hand was the most minuscule droplet, minuscule droplet. And I was able to blend it out. So if this was on my cheek, I would look like a freaking clown. So if you like hyper, hyper, hyper pigmented liquid blushes, 10 out of 10 would recommend checking out the Juvia's Place ones. The shade options were beautiful. I just don't know that I'd ever pry them personally because they're kind of scary to me, but also I'm kind of intrigued because one thing, which is like, I think 18 bucks, would last you for freaking ever. Um, so there's that, but also I shopped. It was the first day of the month that I nixed my no spend. Um, I needed, I, so I've realized lately that my skin, my skin has been looking real good. It's been looking real good. But, and I actually did, I talked about this on Instagram. I was watching some old Instagram stories from like 2018 and the adult acne that I had on my skin was outrageous. And my skin has always been a pain point for me. And I realized lately that like, I haven't had to even go in with my extractor and extract some pores. Like I check every time I go and do my makeup, I look for better, for worse. What can I, like, is there anything I can release? There's nothing there anymore. My skin at age 36 and a half has finally gotten its act together. So there's that, which is amazing news. Awesome. I credit my diet, high fiber, all those things. And just, I don't know, the products I'm using, a little bit of everything. But lately, and this doesn't really happen to me in the summer. In the winter, I would understand, but not in the summer. My skin has been so dry after I've been washing it. And so like I wash it once or twice a day. Most days I only wash it once a day and that's before bed, but, or when I'm in the shower is when I wash it. Um, my skin feels so dry and I've actually had like flaking here and flaking here in the dead of summer humidity. I don't understand it. So I ended up going over and buying some Mad Hippie products because Mad Hippie, both times I've been in Ulta lately, have been buy one, get one 40% off. And that's a great deal. So I bought their jelly cleanser because it's one of the, it's their most moisturizing cleanser. And I realized as I was doing mental um, inventory of all of my cleansers, I don't have a single like moisturizing, hydrating, cleanser, anything of that nature. I have CeraVe, which is gentle, but it is an acne skin formula. I have a BioElements exfoliating foam formula, and I have my Primally Pure Charcoal Bar. All of those are excellent cleansers, and I would recommend them to anybody, but they're not serving a hydrating purpose. And I think right now I actually need a hydrate. Like I've been soaking up, I have been slathering on Primally Pure's soothing skin balm and stuff. And I only use that like in the winter time in very small amounts. And I just literally, after I got out of the shower today, I slapped it all over my face because I wasn't putting makeup on today. And I didn't care if I was shiny. And even if you look at me, like I'm not shiny. My skin has absorbed all of it and my husband's calling, so I'll be back. And we're back. And in the time that my husband was on the phone, he was letting me know he landed and was where he needed to be, which is great. Um, I finished my dinner, which was, I threw in, in this video, obviously, um, Sam's Club haul that I actually did yesterday. And in that was this frozen meal that I was talking about, the taco mac and cheese. Uh, very good, very, very good, a fine, serving, like not an unexpected serving, especially since it's 
pasta. Like it's entirely pasta. Um, very cheesy. Like the queso -y is there. It's very good. My only problem is that it's just on the hair. For somebody who does not do like jalapeno pepper type spice, I'm okay with sriracha and spicy mayo on sushi flavored things. That for whatever reason doesn't bother me. But even then, like if it's too much, I'll get start to get hot. Not wasabi, just sriracha. But the like habanero type peppers or whatever, um, I have a little bit less of a tolerance and like for, um, which is fine. So the, it's just on the hair of spicy. Um, not, not outrageous. I actually didn't even have to go and reach for my water bottle. Um, so this mac and cheese wasn't even to that level, but it does have a little bit of a kick to it. Like I told my husband, you will not like this. I will be eating this by myself, which is fine. More for me. Really nice macro balanced meal. I'll take it. So as I was saying, I realized I didn't have a moisturizing cleanser. So I bought myself the Mad Hippie Jelly Cleanser. And then I purchased, because it was buy one, get one 40% off. Although like mathematically and on my receipt, prices came off of both, so whatever. I bought some more of the face cream, but I opened it, as you can tell, packaging's different. So now I'm actually really curious to know if I paid for the same amount of product as I did before. Um, so actually, let's go check on that. All right, let's see. That's the wrong drawer. Here. I bought the same product, right? Mad Hippie Face Cream. Mad Hippie Face Cream. 1.02, 1.02. Okay, so they changed their packaging. I, I mean, I guess that's fine. Um, I do kind of like the pump. This is a little bit more space saving, which is great. So there's that. But I'm almost out of this. So I repurchased this because for now, I, I almost repurchased the night or, or purchased the night stuff, but I still have my primally pure. This is the clarifying one, and this is the um, soothing one, and I have extra of the soothing one back here. This one's not full. I've been using this to refill the little one strictly because I'm on a no spend and I'm trying to use up what I have. Way to go, stick it to your goals, Brianna. Uh, I did not buy the night cream, but I did buy the day cream because I don't necessarily like on days, especially that I wear makeup, the primally pure stuff can be a little bit too glossy um, and just kind of make things look a little bit slick and shiny. And this does not do that. So I use that as my day, day moisturizer and the Primally Pure ones as my night moisturizer. I still can't get over the adjustment on how quick this camera is to adjust to new lighting scenarios. I absolutely love it. Um, so then my Ulta is right by Crumble Cookies. Mm -hmm. So girlfriend treated herself and I couldn't decide which one I wanted. So I treated myself and this week I got myself an Oreo one and a peanut butter one and this right here, I almost didn't do it. But then I said, you know what? you would like to eat them. You want to have them around. And this is going to be an excellent lesson in intuitive eating and giving yourself full permission to have the things, but not feeling compelled to eat all of it. Cause you can always have more. You can always go get crumble any day you want crumble. You can go get crumble Brianna. So that's, so I have these. I already told my husband, I'm going to save him some of this Oreo cookie one. So that takes care of some of that, but I bought myself some crumble cookies and that's it, man. I gotta go play with this monster. Hello, monster. You're such a putz. Why can't I pet you? So I guess that's it. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.